back to PSA Admin. I'm Mark, the PowerShell Admin. This isn't a normal episode because I don't really have anything to go over with you that's really easy to follow along that you'd be able to do right there at your computer right now, at least not much. Um, instead, what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do in this episode is I'd like to take what I know, which is PowerShell, and use that to share something that's a little bit meaningful to me. Um, I'm gonna be going over a, um, a beloved piece of computing history that is equal parts math, biology, art, and, um, and puzzle. And uh, of course, what I'm talking about is uh, Conway's Game of Life, whose brilliant and renowned creator, John Conway, passed away uh, tragically uh, uh, just really recently in the last few days. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to honor Conway by sharing my own implementation of uh, his game that I've written in PowerShell. Um, I'll be spending the first part of the video going over really the game itself, and then um, I'll, I'll go into the PowerShell a little bit at the end of the video. So if that's what you're interested in, you can just skip ahead. Uh, Conway created his game of life in 1970, and it's been a staple of computing ever since. Life is really nothing but a simple set of rules that defines a cellular automaton. That is, um, it's a simulation of the life, death, and reproduction of uh, groups of single-celled organisms. What makes Conway's life so intriguing is that the rules are very simple, but the outcomes are often very complex. Uh, they can be very surprising. And it's just, it's very deep, the different interactions uh, between different uh, smaller and larger patterns that people have discovered. And so they make all sorts of really large scale, interesting creations out of it. And it's all based on um, some very simple rules to, to the game itself. Um, so life takes place in a two dimensional play field that is infinite in each direction. Uh, and the, the rules are just that there are live and dead cells. The live cells in my uh, version here are represented by these light colored cells. And the dead cells are the, uh, the dark colored empty cells. And uh, the rules are that for a living cell to continue living in the next generation, it needs exactly two or three neighbors in the current generation. And if a dead or empty cell has exactly three neighbors, it will, uh, those cells will reproduce and it will be uh, living in the next generation. In any other circumstance, there, uh, that cell will die. So if a living cell has more than three neighbors or fewer than two, then it will die in the next generation. And a dead cell will stay dead unless it has exactly three living neighbors. And you can actually see this here by these little, uh, uh, these little things called blinkers which is just a, a line of three cells. Let's look at that line them up, right? Which is a line of three cells. And so there's the one in the middle always has two cells to either side of it, but on the ends, they only neighbor, they only have one living neighbor. However, the other cells to the sides of the one in the middle have three neighbors. They have the, the one in the middle plus the two ends. And so they spawn each generation. So you get this, horizontal, vertical, switching um, oscillation in, in these patterns called blinkies or blinkers. I should mention that my implementation is pretty limited. Not only is it really slow, but it doesn't have a truly infinite play field. It wraps at the edges. And this does prevent me from either starting with really large patterns or patterns that grow to be really large or small patterns that infinitely produce or reproduce um, because eventually a pattern will wrap around and interfere with itself. Whereas in the proper impl implementation of the game, it would just go on forever. Um, it's, it's something I looked at, but it's, it's, it was probably a little beyond my skill level to get this done quickly with, with that feature or that core requirement in there. Um, so those really are the only two rules though that they, uh, about the living, how they stay alive and the dead, how they can um, become populated when the living ones reproduce. So some of the most intriguing patterns are these classifications called spaceships. And the most elemental and simple spaceship is the humble glider. Um, it consists of just five cells. 
And what a spaceship is, is it's a pattern that repeats and cleanly moves through the play field. So as you'll see this glider, um, it's always gonna move in a diagonal direction. And what's nice about these gliders is not only are they very easy to draw, but they also have, um, they also always have, in, in each frame, they have this little diagonal tail that points away from the direction that they are traveling. So they're really easy to, they're really easy to, um, to draw and, and to, uh, to orient as well. Um, but as you can see, you know, you, get, you run into problems with, with the wrapping around edges that I have. So another kind of spaceship, a uh, little larger than the glider, are these three. This is called a lightweight, and a medium weight, and a heavyweight. And they're all uh, the same family of spaceship. And it's kind of unusual because you don't often see patterns like this that you have the, you get the almost the exact same uh, pattern with a, a slightly scaled up version of itself. So. The spaceships, uh, these spaceships, uh, lightweight, heavy, medium weight, and heavyweight travel either right or left or up or down, unlike the gliders, which go uh, diagonally. Uh, one of the early and interesting discovery was uh, Gosper's glider gun. And you'll see this is a repeating pattern that spawns an infinite number of gliders. Now, again, in my, in my field, they're eventually going to fill up and it's going to cause problems. So to deal with that, um, what we can do is we can set up um, uh, this little guy here, which is called an eater. This is eater one, and it's designed or it, it's found to absorb these gliders very uh, neatly and retain its shape so that we can keep the glider gun going indefinitely. Now, if you want something a little bit snazzier, you can just take two glider guns and aim them at each other. So right here, you can see that the gliders are hitting nose on and they disintegrate, and so that could also go forever. Um, a related class uh, to, let me get myself out of the way here. A related class to spaceships is the Puffer, and it's kind of like a spaceship, except it leaves debris behind, and this one right here is called Puffer 1. So you can see it leaves some blinkies, it leaves, uh, that's probably a name for that, but whatever pattern that is. Um, and then, of course, it's going to run into the debris that it leaves behind and then self-destruct. Uh, a really interesting, another kind of puffer is uh, this guy right here, which is called uh, the, it's called a blinker puffer because it leaves behind those blinkers that we were, that I was showing you earlier. And it's going to have the same problem. It's going to run into the blinkers and also self-destruct. But this one self-destructs much more neatly and cleanly than Puffer 1 did. Um, so in order to take care of, in order to take care of those blinkers, uh, you can use what's called a blinker fuse, and that's something that will travel along the row of blinkers and neatly dispose of them. In this case, the heavyweight spaceship, if placed just right, does, uh, does the job perfectly. So now we can keep the blinker Puffer 2 uh, traveling indefinitely with a heavyweight spaceship on its tail, cleaning up after it. You can think of this as, um, I think the word ecology often is used in, the, in the, the lingo for Conley's life about things that clean up after themselves and don't spew, um, don't spew stuff all over the place. And you know, finally, one of, the, one of the neat things about the game is that not only are there still a large number of um, dedicated fans of the game, but they're continuing to, continuing to research and explore the game, and they, they use tools uh, to assist in this research. And so they're finding new patterns that were previously unknown. So this one here is called Sir Robin, and it was only discovered in 2018, and it's significant because it's the first elemental night ship that was discovered. Uh, like a knight in chess, it moves two in one direction and then one uh, 90 degrees from that direction. So two over, one up in this case. And, and this, uh, this class of, of spaceship didn't exist until 2018. So you can see that better tooling and a continuing dedicated fan base 
it's kind of hard to follow here as it moves on. But better tooling and a continued dedicated fan base um, has led to continued to, uh, continued discoveries in in the world of uh, Conway's life. So, um, before I get into the the PowerShell here, um, I I did just want to say though I, I hope I was able to give you a glimpse into this fascinating game that has captivated countless people since the seventies. Um, I've always really delighted in John, Way John Conway's life um, and found it to be almost elemental, like Tetris or chess, one of those games that doesn't feel like it was developed, but actually discovered by someone, as though those rules were always there. Um, and, and, and just the way it was presented is, is why it's so intuitive and, and why it functions so, so well. Um, which I think is a, a testament to to the genius of John Conway himself. So let's start looking at the PowerShell. As I mentioned earlier, um, I didn't I didn't actually attempt to make it an infinite field. I, I decided that was probably a little bit beyond my ability right now, at least to to quickly uh, come up with this. So it's uh, just a in this case a, a 100 by 60 bool array, very simple uh, two dimensional array. And uh, you might have noticed or been able to infer that um, I'm uh, fitting two pixels into each console character by using a, an upper and a lower uh, uh, different uh, character that's both upper and lower. One's just upper, upper one is just lower, like a, and then one's empty. It's like a, a two bit um, kind of per character. Um, display and um and i and i use that if you might have noticed with uh with my other animations like cloopy and the um uh, and the title screen uh the the title animations so what actually was kind of hard to do was to get the mouse well uh, work the mouse to work and i i only went with the mouse because i couldn't figure out how to uh, elegantly use keyboard input because of the upper and lower pixel issue. So you could have a blinking cursor, but you know, what, what are you editing the top or the bottom? So do you have two keys? It, it just seemed like it was hard to do. So I looked at ways to use the mouse and the simplest is, um, we got this, um, uh, if you load, if you add the system.windows.forms, um, type, you get this position static method and that's always going to tell you where the mouse is on your screen um, and the i saw the problem of clicking and so there there isn't a library i can use called global mouse keyhook by george mamaladze and it's actually pretty easy to use in powershell as far as detecting the clicks what i couldn't do is get it to intercept the clicks so that you would always be clicking on the console window. And if you have quick edit enabled, it's going to be selecting it. And that's really, I thought would be kind of annoying. So I was, then I was looking at ways to disable quick edit programmatically. So the user didn't have to, and it just got a little more complicated. And so I ended up going with a, a total kludge, which is um, you don't click with the mouse. You, you tap the F key while moving the mouse and it's, it's kind of ugly, but it also works so much better than any purely keyboard method. And it, and it saved me a lot of time versus trying to get the, the mouse part, all the different parts working properly. So I didn't, again, I felt like it's, it's kind of kludgy, but it, it also kind of just works and, and I'm okay with that. And as for performance, this is such a slow performing version of life. And I think a lot of that is just the PowerShell uh, syntax being churned through by the scripting engine so many times being interpreted. Uh, there's, I, I could try adding some C sharp types, uh, custom coding some to take care of that. It, it would probably be a lot faster. It also kind of defeats the purpose of doing it in PowerShell. Maybe then you just do it in C sharp. So I'm not really sure. I might, I'll probably end up going down that road because ultimately what I want is a nice functioning, uh, John Conway's life. Um, and, and there were a couple that I, I did look up existing implementations of it in PowerShell. Like a couple people tried it. Neither of them was using the console buffer 
the way I would want to use it to to make the you know the different pixels and to have it uh, refresh a screen at a time um, instead of you know actually you know it helps is um, lower starting density uh, they weren't using the console buffer in a way that I was really wanting to wanting so so I just kind of wrote it from scratch and there's only one part that I did use from someone else's work and that was the type definition to get the window position so that's it there there's uh there's some more you know problems that I attempted to solve some I probably did better on than others um by the way you know, I was talking about I love gliders they, they're just fun to spot like you can see there's two there's one right here and then there's one down here um I just like the I, I like oh there's one too I like just seeing them spawn out of the soup and then um, run into something and blow up. <laughs> There's one. It, it's just it's just something to keep an eye out for, you know. It's like when you know one pro sports player, and you show up to the game and you're like, oh, I know that, you know, you know who the particular player is or something, right? Like I don't, a lot of these have names. Like that's probably got a name. I know this does a block or or something. Um, I think. I feel like this is called a boat. Um, that stable pattern, which that scale can be, it's like I believe can have yeah that that extra pixel on each end or extra cell. So anyway, um, that's that's my implementation of uh, John Conway's life. Um, there are a lot of things that I really need to uh, that I really probably look, or I'm going to want to look at in in subsequent revisions. Uh, let's see, like the variable names are all over the place. I should functionalize a lot of it. I, I just copied and pasted the same code over and over again that really should be put in a function. Um, I'd like to hash each generation, uh, especially if I don't add the the infinite play field to sometime soon. I mean, that's, that's definitely a, a goal, but if I can't, it'd be nice to be able to hash each generation so that the simulation would be able to detect how long it takes for it to reach a state of equilibrium essentially any as soon as one play field is the exact same as another as a prior play field in from that starting seed then that's the number of generations it takes to, to reach a state of equilibrium because again it's deterministic so as soon as they're the exact same they're only ever going to reach other uh, generation other states that they've already been in and, and ultimately usually it's just going to be a bunch of blinkies or blinkers um so that's something I'd like to add. Um, maybe some on-screen instructions or uh, like a generation number, a display population count. Um, maybe I could have those be, you know, toggle. You could hide them or, or show them so it didn't take up too much screen real estate. Um, and of course, again, the, the infinite play field, I think, is, is the, the biggest nice to have. So I could actually run, well, with some better performance. So I could actually run some of these larger and more complex patterns, not the giant ones that you if you should go you should look it up like some of the ones they just they pull back and there's they're doing so much it's insane um so i hope this inspired you to learn more about john conway uh and his game of life or just to take a second look at uh your own work in powershell and uh to just think about ways that you can improve it or things you could add to it um and so i figured what i would leave you with is uh this intriguing pattern right here uh, it's related to the subject and we'll just see what happens to it uh, thank you so much for joining me on the PS Admin channel. I'm Mark the PowerShell Admin, and I look forward to making future videos for you. Take care.